Richard. James, for a day that was so heavy in terms of economic news with retail sales numbers coming through and the RBA's rates decision, it was quite disappointing in terms of volumes. We saw $4.3 billion worth of stock being traded, which means that today, Tuesday, was quieter than the first day of the week and the first day of the quarter yesterday. So, but, so we did see a bit of movement on the Aussie market, but really you can divide it into trading before the RBA rates decision and trading after the rates decision. If we have a look at the range in trading for the ASX 200, we swung from a gain of half a percent to looking quite flat and of course after the RBA rates uh, decision we saw the market really going quite flat with a revival in the last hour so if we have a look at the intraday graph of the Australian market this is what it looks like we peaked early on in the morning with a half a percent rise and after the rates decision we did see the market down to flat but then a revival in the last hour of trade the biggest movements were in the materials and the energy space the material sector was up as much as 0.8 percent before turning flat and then finishing the day still pretty flat up by 0.1 percent and the energy sector saw a similar movement up by 0.6 percent then looking quite flat a gain of 0.3 percent in the end but i think what was most impressive about the day was the consumer discretionary space one of the best performers in terms of sector performance and also telecom which saw quite a bit of support with a rise of 1.8 percent uh, there because of the gain in Telstra but altogether for a day which where we saw a lot of news coming out not a lot of volume going through so that was quite disappointing. Michael McCarthy we're going to be speaking to uh, Tony Farnham as well as Stephen Kakoulis and, and really delving into that statement and the outlook for interest rates. For now though I wanted to get back to Julie something you mentioned and that was volumes very low what's going on at the moment I mean we started to see a very good first quarter volumes were above average things were looking pretty healthy again what's the concern why the low volume well, one of the things that we were watching for uh, this week was whether we saw any follow-through buying uh, from the, the strong performance that we saw related to end of quarter portfolio shuffling last uh, week and we haven't really seen that come through in fact the Australian market once again looking quite disappointing in terms of performance and in terms of volumes as well I mean on a day like this where we were seeing such a strong day in terms of data we saw very light volumes and that's quite unusual for the Aussie share market so I guess still a lot of cautiousness out there are uh, still investors traders waiting on the sidelines there and if we have a look at our big sectors well we saw quite a big move uh, quite a big positive move earlier on with the material space up by 0.8 percent but by the end of the session only a gain of 0.1 percent there so really not pointing to a hugely strong uh, momentum in terms of positive momentum for some of our biggest sectors there but all eyes really were, were on that uh, RBA rates decision and a very different reaction uh, from the Aussie market compared to the Aussie dollar. This was the Aussie market today and you can see we saw a revival in the end because of course that lower rate cut in May would be good news for the Australian share market but if we have a look at how the Aussie dollar traded today you can see that there was no revival in the Aussie dollar still staying below that 104 US cent mark. So coming into this rates decision uh, the market was pricing in a 33 percent chance of a rate cut today but a 90 percent chance of a rate cut in May post the decision the market will be moving towards fully pricing in that rate cut for me. Where does that then leave Julia the outlook for the Australian dollar if their expectations are for a rate cut come May do you expect that to have some sort of cap on any upward movements of the Australian dollar or are there are too many other factors such as I suppose China growth and some of the commodity movements to to maybe make that a little less relevant. If we have a look at the last couple of weeks, the market has started to price in a near-term rate cut and that's had a big impact in terms of the Aussie dollar which has moved lower and in terms of the Aussie share market which has moved higher, especially sectors such as uh, the banking space as well, well as uh, the material space slowly starting to move as well. So that lower Aussie dollar would be a catalyst for stronger earnings coming out of Australian companies, especially for those exporters and we have seen some very strong performances coming through from the likes of QB Insurance News Corporation which have been supported by that lower Australian dollar. So expectations around that interest rate cut in May very much feeding into the Aussie dollar and that Aussie do dollar looking quite weak at the moment. We've seen that 104 point mark being broken so signalling further weakness for the Aussie dollar. Good news for the Australian share market which does tend to be uh, very strongly export driven. So good news uh, for those companies which are exposed to overseas earnings or have large amounts of borrowings and that has been supportive uh, for the Aussie market that, that weaker Australian dollar because there has been a strong headwind and we saw that coming through and feeding through in earnings season um, but altogether I guess that lower Aussie dollar looking like it's
it's going to continue because of interest rate expectations and good news for the Aussie share market.